Hey, future respiratory therapist, question here from Fallon. She wants to know about calculating spontaneous tidal volume and spontaneous minute ventilation. Now, I've done a video over this before, and that's where we use these formulas to calculate tidal volume and minute ventilation. But because she specifically asked for spontaneous tidal volume and spontaneous minute volume, then I'm going to guess that this question is probably talking about how do I calculate spontaneous tidal volume when my patient is in a mode of mechanical ventilation, is on a mechanical ventilator, okay? So the first thing I want to tell you is, is if you're in assist control, there is no spontaneous, so you don't have to worry about calculating it. So we don't need to talk about assist control, okay? All tidal volumes are set, okay? So, so we don't even need to talk about assist control. When you're in pressure support ventilation, it's all spontaneous breathing. So you simply take your minute volume, divide it by your respiratory rate, and that will give you your average spontaneous tidal volume. So we really don't need to talk about pressure support either because that's pretty straightforward. Okay, It's the total minute volume divided by the respiratory rate. Everything belongs to the patient. And so... And so there's nothing really to, really complicated there. So I'm going to step out on a limb here and say that this video is probably a request on how to find spontaneous tidal volume and spontaneous minute volume when your patient is in SIMV ventilation, okay? And that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, this is a question that a lot of students have. A lot of them struggle. A lot of students struggle to grasp um, how do I know what, what the patient's spontaneous values are. Okay, and so hopefully this will help make sense to you. Okay, now I, I draw a little diagram, but I'm going to draw it. I'm going to break it down step by step to you. Okay, first of all, you need to understand that anytime there's a mechanical ventilator with a patient on it, then you have two components. You have the ventilator who is responsible for what it's told to do, and you have the patient doing what the patient wants to do. The key is making them work together, right? And then separating out what belongs to the vent and what belongs to the patient. Okay, this is important because if you're in SIMV or if you're, let's say you're in assist control, no patient, all vent, right? The patient can initiate, but the volumes are, are, are controlled by the ventilator. So this is assist control. You wouldn't want to tell the doc, hey, my, my patient's volumes are good. They're getting, uh, their volumes are 500. If you're in assist control, that's the ventilator's volume, right? So you want to be able to, to recognize that you have a machine and a patient. That's the first thing, right? And they realize that they work together in SIMV, okay? So you have, um, I'm just gonna put vent. Oh. You have vent plus patient, okay? And these two together, when you add them together, will give you a total. Okay, now this is going to make more sense here in just a second. So in SIMV, you have your set rate at your set tidal volume. That belongs to the vent. And then anything over that belongs to the patient. The vent is going to give you numbers and values that represent the total of these two. Okay, so vent plus patient equals total. Now, once we understand that, then we're going to draw a little box here. Okay, and we're going to separate it out like this. And then we need to understand that respiratory rate times tidal volume equals minute volume. So we're going to break it down like this. Okay? Now, respiratory rate times tidal volume equals minute volume. That's going to be the formula that we're going to use to figure out our spontaneous VE and our spontaneous tidal volume in conjunction with our vent plus patient equals total. We'll have all the numbers we need to fill in all of these boxes, okay? So I'm going to give you a scenario here. You have a patient on SIV. I'm really not going to think about it. I'm just going to go. They have a set rate of 10. They have a set tidal volume of 500. They have a total respiratory rate of 22. And they have a total... VE of, um, let's go 
Okay, so total minute ventilation is 9.7. Now, you just take this data and plug it into the squares and watch it all come together. Your set respiratory rate is going to go on the vent side under set respiratory rate. Okay, your set tidal volume is going to go with the vent under tidal volume. So I'm going to do 0 0.500. Okay, now total respiratory rate. We're going to come down here to total under respiratory and put 22. And then total VE, we're going total 9.7. Okay, so this is what this looks like. Now look, we can figure everything else out. Okay, if we know that, let's start with the vent here. A set rate of 10 with a tidal volume of 500, respiratory rate times tidal volume gives us our VE. So our set VE is 5.0 liters. This is liters, this is milliliters, okay? So 5.0 liters is what's coming from the ventilator side of things. It is guaranteeing, if your patient doesn't breathe at all, they will get 10 breaths a minute, tidal volume 500, five liters per minute is your minute volume, okay? Now, we gotta figure out what's going on here, right? Because the question is, how do I get spontaneous tidal volume and minute ventilation? So I'm putting little question marks here. So how do we figure this out, okay? Well, if the vent is giving 10 breaths a minute, but your total is 22, then the additional 12, 22 minus 10 is 12, must belong to the patient. They can't belong to anybody else. So it has to be the patient, right? So, we can't do anything with tidal volume yet, but we also know that if we have a total VE of 9.7, and we subtract what the vent is responsible for, 9.7 minus 5 is 4.7, okay? Then we understand that the patient's spontaneous minute volume is 4.7. See, this 9.7 doesn't all belong to the patient. Five of that belongs to the ventilator. The vent is responsible for that, okay? Remember, this is an SIMV, all right? So that means that the extra 4.7 must be coming from the patient. Now, how do we get how do we get tidal volume? Well, if we know respiratory rate times tidal volume equals minute ventilation, then we also know that tidal volume equals minute ventilation divided by respiratory rate. Okay, so let's do that and see what we get. We've got uh, 4.7 4 divided by 12 and we get a tidal volume approximately 392 milli... I'm sorry, I put decimals here. These are milliliters that I'm talking about, okay? If you have a decimal there, then it's just 0.5 liters or 0.392 liters. We just, we're gonna talk in terms of milliliters. So the patient's spontaneous tidal volume is 392. Now there's one square left on this board. Do not add these two together. This square gets a big X because there is no total tidal volume. We don't add the patient's tidal volume to the machine's tidal volume, one tidal volume. Remember, tidal volume is one breath. So it doesn't make sense to add those together. So they just get an X in that box. Okay, it doesn't exist. It's not anything. Okay, so that's how you get it. Your answer to this question, set rate of 10, tidal volume 500, total rate of 22, total minute ventilation 9.7, What's my spontaneous tidal volume? What's my spontaneous minute volume? Here's your answer right here. 392 is your tidal volume. 4.7 is your minute volume. Okay? Fun, easy. I don't know about fun. It's fun to me, but it's not, a lot of students don't find stuff that I think is fun, fun. But easy little tool. Remember, respiratory rate times tidal volume. Vent plus patient equals total. Build this out. Fill in the boxes. It works every time. Every single time. Okay? So I hope this helps, Fallon. If it didn't, let me know. If I didn't answer the question you were asking, also let me know. Okay? Hope everybody has a great day.